So today, guys, we're going to be talking about on-location bags. And if you're a videographer, filmmaker, or photographer, you already know what the dilemma is like when you're trying to choose which bag you can use to carry all the gear that you may need for a shoot, whether it's a running gun or something that you have set up for a client. You know, when I go out, these are some of the newer pieces that I've gotten, but usually I use pro photo lights whenever I'm out on location. So I started investing here in the uh, AD 200s because they're very flexible for taking out on location. When I'm doing weddings or other corporate events, obviously I use a gimbal. I'm using the Smooth 4 as my smartphone gimbal, and I have the Crane 3 Lab as my um, larger gimbal for the Sony a7 III and the Sony a7R II that I use on location. So whenever I'm transporting all of this stuff, I'm going to be carrying a tablet, gimbals, lenses, flashes, microphones, all of these things have to fit comfortably in a bag, especially when I'm out doing this on my own and I'm just going to be a one-man band for the day. So one of the bags that I've been using is this Low Pro which is a very nice size uh, backpack that allows you to put one camera body inside and it would just fit right in here. It would slide in from the slot here. You have these other two little pockets that you're able to like drop a, a flash in or a diffuser, some little brackets, little small things you can put in there that seem to work out just fine. And so far, you know, if it's only something like headshots where I don't really need a lot of equipment, you know, this has worked perfectly. Then the top of the bag has another pocket where you can place things inside of it, but it doesn't go all the way through. So you reach a point where it's just a, a level. So I can put like a flash head in here, other little accessories, things like that. And it's worked out pretty good. You have a couple of pockets in here. This is a very, very old bag. I think I've had this bag probably about 10 years. And the side does allow for a pocket for your laptop or your tablet, which again is great. And then it has another pocket right here on the front of the bag where you can just pop in some other items, you know, things that, you know, like a... Uh, battery pack or something like that, cell phones. You got a couple of little uh, external pockets that you can linch up on the side that maybe you could put a bottle of water or something like that. But overall, it's been a pretty good bag. But most of the time when I go out on location, I need something a little bit larger. So then I also purchased this other GoPro, I mean this Low Pro bag, and it's a little bit larger because... You have a number of pockets here on the side, a really large area here that you can place any number of items that can just kind of lay flat. So I'll put like some of my GoPro stuff in here, um, ND filters, things like that. And so far, like I said, it's, it's worked out pretty good. Then the interior of the bag, it's pretty large because in here I can fit two camera bodies. I can fit one of the AD200 uh, studio heads. I can put two flashes in here, remote for the flashes, ND filters, pistol grips if I need them. You know, I just usually have an assortment of different things that'll be in here, like, you know, tripod mounts, the camera itself, you know, whichever camera I'm going to put in the bag. And also in here, I have just like a few other accessories, like an air blower, um, covers for the studio heads if I take the, the top off. And then it has a number of different pockets that you can put a lot of accessories in, you know, cables and batteries and things like that. So again, this too has been a very good bag so far. But... Once I purchase the Crane Lab 3, I ran into a problem that I was using before. 
So it's right about the same size as that backpack. But because of the way it's configured or the way it's supposed to be configured, it should allow for me to be able to get the gimbal inside of the bag as well as some other items. So let's open it up and see what we get. Now they all come with this little rain cover, which is pretty cool, but I doubt I'll need that. So when you remove the rain cover, you're left with the bag. Now from what I can tell, it's a very nice hard shell bag. It has a lot of loops all over the bag that allow you to attach a number of different things throughout the bag, which is pretty cool. It has a side pouch here where you can place some items, something small, I would say. Let's see if there's one on the other side. Yes, there is. Then you have another one on this side. It's not very deep. If you can see how far my hand's going in, that's about the full extent of it right there. But one of the things that I really like about this bag is that it opens from the inside. And where that comes in handy, if you're a travel photographer and you're worried about your gear, this is the type of bag that you want to have because that means someone can't just walk up behind you and, you know, stick their hands in and grab something. Now, it comes with a few other items. One looks like a belt. Let's take a look. So this is a waist belt and it also has a number of loops on it so you could attach a number of things to that which is pretty cool. I'll probably never use that. It also comes with a number of different pouches that you could attach to the outside of it. And then you could then put items inside of that. It just kind of has this little drawstring that allows you to release it. So you could use that as a water bottle bag or, you know, other small items. Maybe even put a monopod. You know, depending on how you have your bag configured, if you had a monopod, maybe the monopod could fit inside of that and then still be attached to the bag. So that could be possibly uh, a way to transport your monopod. Uh, here's another little bag. Now this one might be perfect for, you know, carrying your memory cards. If you have a memory card holder or something like that. I'm assuming this one was probably designed with smartphones in mind or something like that. Maybe that's what that would be used for. I'm sure I'd find some use for it. So inside of the bag, there's a little pocket here. There's another one on the opposite side, so you can put a few items in there. You have another pouch that's here near the top of the bag. And all of your dividers are configurable, just like it is in most bags. So you could Velcro those apart and you could reconfigure them however you need to in order to fit lenses, different camera bodies, things like that. But the most important thing to me was to be able to fit the gimbal. And that's what you have here. So you have two pockets. I believe one is for the gimbal and one would allow you to place a 15 inch Mac, uh, laptop or, or a tablet or something like that. And then it just Velcros closed. So you would literally take, let's get the gimbal and see how that fits inside. Take the handle off. Just drop that in there for now. So it should just fit perfectly inside of there. But I still have it configured for my camera. So I don't have... I feel like this bag is definitely a worthwhile investment. I have paid much more for other bags. And they have served me for many, many years. So I believe from what I can tell, the materials this bag is made from, this should last quite some time. All right, guys. It's Rome, and I will catch you guys in the next video. Peace. I'm out.